Listen, Raw Down's not up there, Martin. Oh, yeah? It's down here in hell. Welcome to Raw Down, everybody. Raw Down is in <laughs> hell this week because it Raw is down. unfortunately in not only the worst yep. state in the union, but the worst city in the worst state. Shout out to Columbus, shit, Ohio. Yeah. And yeah. Coming at you live from the pit of scum and villainy that is Ohio. And speaking Ugh. of hell, Vince opens from hell backstage. And he tells us that yesterday at Backlash, him and Shane did the impossible, and they beat God. So tonight, just like God, he's taking the day off. So he's just going to sit back here in this big-ass chair. My entire house just fell. It's fine. And he's got five co-GMs that are running the show tonight. Woo! And I was like, hold on. Which five is he going to pick? They legitimately got me. And then the Spirit Squad run in. And they're all like, yeah, this is great. This is an honor. We're going to break boundaries tonight. We're going to put our tag titles on the line. <clears throat> and we all drew spirit straws. <laughs> and Penny is going to have a match for the world whatever title with John Cena. Also, the Divas, they're going to have a tag match. And they're going to be dressed as cheerleaders, just like us. Okay, everybody, let's go. They do a thing where you all put your hands in the circle at the sport event and then raise them and yell, go team. So they all do it, and then Vince just kind of stares at them first. They're like, come on, Vince. And then he puts it in, and they raise him and go, yeah. And we get hype. And then we go to a, a Divas tag match where Jerry immediately says he's going to come prematurely. Uh, Nico, did you come prematurely? Oh. Uh, you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna say it was a uh, pre precom for this one. Oh, that's right, that's right. Let me tell you, you know, just like Vince McMahon, I'm sitting in my chair and I'm just gooning and coming this whole match. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh. Well, not even this whole match, this whole show. This whole you know, show. This whole show is just Vince McMahon gooning and coming. <laughs> and I, and folks will, you'll you'll know that's true by the end I, I will explain in detail why as the show goes around but let's start with our first example toy wilson and maria versus victoria and mickey james toy wilson comes out and uh, i hate to say it, nothing special uh no. this is <laughs> Well, I mean, like, you know, she's fine, but it's like, you know, it's just something. Uh, King goes around and says how much he loves the Spirit Squad. He is now the number one Spirit Squad fan for this one. Uh, Maria comes out. Uh, they actually told us her ent entrance song in the corner, uh, With Legs Like That by Zebrahead. I'm so happy it's here. That is so, such a mismatched entrance for Maria's character. Yeah, what is this shitty fake <clears throat> Blink-182 that we yeah. have here? What do you mean, so, dude? Oh, you, you so know this Zebra? is... It's Zebra. No. Yeah. Who does such songs such as All My Friends Are Nobody, Falling Apart, Anthem, Out of Control, and The Perfect Crime. And... And they did the Sonic you, 06 theme. Yeah, folks at home would know that Zebrahead does a lot of music for Sonic the Hedgehog games. Yep, yep. Ah, which makes perfect sense. My big issue with the theme isn't the song itself. It's that Maria should be coming out to music for a five-year-old, <laughs> not an eleven-year-old. Whoa! Come on, man. That's how they portray her on the show. It's not my fault. So she comes out, and yeah, I did listen to some Zebrahead. Yeah, not not the best of the era. Anyways, we move oh, on. Oh, they're not to... Newfound Glory, dude. Are you kidding me? Oh, uh, newfound glory. It's all downhill uh, from here. I can't make that joke. Uh, anyways. <laughs> Vic Ex Victoria comes out, and Victoria just looks so fucking pissed. You know, she's a heel, and she's done some of these sexier gimmicks and been fine, but I feel like this one just got on a fucking nose, because she comes out, and she's fucking pissed. And I, I can't tell if this is supposed to fit in. Like with her character, but I don't think so. I think she's actually mad. And then Mickey James also comes out, and it's red versus blue. <clears throat> so, you know, right now we're two years into Halo Two, ready to get into Halo Three. So, you know, just cheap, cheeky little reference. Obviously not, but still. Anyways, what do you mean? Vince, 
Hey, Nico. Yep. You ever wonder why we're here? No. But yes. <laughs> All right. Hey. hey. <laughs> yeah. Modern philosopher. Modern philosopher. Folks. Why are we here? Fuck it. God damn it. Kazuhira. Sorry, I, I was in the zone on that one. Yeah. Was the goon zone. Oh, we are in the goon zone. Ass. Why are you here? Why do we have to suffer every day? You grab on my loins and they're not there because this match is not there. So Victoria starts the match against Toy. Uh, there's a actually pretty decent hail pulling spot where Victoria's got um, Toy on the on her back and she's kind of pulling the hair out. Like again, I always like Victoria's work. I think she does good. Uh, she then slams her into the floor. Toy gets, got like the arm and holds it. You know, like in like one of those arm holds and tags Maria. Uh, Maria, as soon as that happened, Victoria runs and tags Mickey. Uh, they throw. Victoria into Mickey. Uh, Toy slams into them. Toy sets up for the Rikishi spot. Again, another example of this is Vince McMahon gooning off. I'm t and as soon as I saw that Rik uh, Rikishi spot, I wrote, Becky Lynch is crying right now. Maria is Bronco busting wow. them. <laughs> Vince <laughs> is busting a nut. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Mickey throws, is thrown out of the ring. Joey, Joey Styles has a great line. This may be the end of jocularity in this contest. What do you mean by that? I, that's a great question. I don't know. But you know what? <clears throat> I'll give him this one. Jocularity. That sounds like a very Vince McMahon word, to be honest. Uh, Mickey goes for an apron to ring suplex, but this is where the twist happens. Trish comes in with the arm sling and goes for the leg tripping it and maria falls on mickey james and wins kevin dunn is clearly joking off as the camera catches the pin and centers on maria's panties maria is happy trish is mad in a sling and mickey is just confused uh not a good match but completely hot is this the Ty, first time oh my bad what's ahead. up no you got it you're good you're gonna actually talk about wrestling now no, i was gonna say is this it. is this nico's first not like a good women's match he's seen He's like, eh, no, it's whatever. I, uh, no, I've had a few. I don't, I don't know. know. I feel like this is the one that, like, because all the other ones you usually find, like, a positive spin on it. And this one, you're just kind of like, you're downtrodden. Nico, are you okay? I think Zebra had knocked him out. I don't I know. So. Like, it was fine. It just, it came out a little, it came out a little awkward, I thought, in a lot of kind of the stuff. Like, Victoria's good. And then you have what toy Mickey and, and like, and I think the issue is again, like the heels have the good wrestlers. So it's like, it's fine. It did its job, but it, you know, it, this match means nothing. This was just, it, let's see girls in cheerleading outfits. Like, it didn't add anything. It's official. Nico hates Maria. Oh I no. Don't. Oh Maria no. Maria is fine, but they just betray her terribly. Yeah, but... To your point, Joey, Literally in this match, basically says, "Yeah, Tori and Maria suck at wrestling." So I think uh, <laughs> Victoria and Mickey have the advantage here. Yeah. But here's here's the real question. Hi. Yes. Who is Maria as a Sonic character? Oh God, I don't know, dude. <laughs> bro, it's it. Blaze the yeah, cat. I was gonna, I was gonna say Blaze the cat. Oh. All right, Blaze the cat. You know, correct take. Oh no. Because you know Lita's Rouge, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's a Lita. <laughs> or Rogue. I don't remember what the fuck her name is. It's Rouge. Yeah. Everybody just spells it Rogue. Ah. Uh, yeah. Ah. But, ah. Yeah. Like, like I said, it's like, it's not like bad. It wasn't good. It, 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 it's harmless. It was there. I mean, it's it, it's there because they're in cheerleading outfits wrestling. Isn't that kind of hot? Yeah, it was fine. I have a quick question for Martin. What's up? Out of all of Vince's seven sons, who do, which one's his favorite, and which one's his least favorite at this moment? I'm not talking about all time. Um, in storyline or in real life? Yeah, either one. Out of the seven children he has. Well, in show. real life, his favorite is always Triple H, and his least favorite is always Shane. Wow! Even all the Spirit Squad get in the middle. That's crazy. Yeah, in storyline, it <clears throat> it's probably Kenny. Oh. And H might be lowest in story right now, because we'll talk about later. 
Yeah. But it's always Hunter. <laughs> you know it's not Hunter? Hmm. The Spirit Squad, because they're here. They're all three here. I mean, what was it? We got Kenny. Not Kenny's not here. He's He'll be here later. We got uh, Johnny. We got Nikki. And we got Mikey. And for whatever reason, fucking Mikey's got the mic. Heh <laughs> And he starts he starts uh, laughing a lot about how uh, they drew the spirit straws, and Kenny got the the shot of John Cena. As far as the three of us goes, that's right. We schedule six man tag right now. You want to know why we did that? Because we're Spirit Squad, and you know who our opponents are. Well, let's call them the Odd Squad. And then you hear Eugene's music hit, and you're like, "Fuck, fuck you, <laughs> fuck you." Uh. And you just yeah. hear gold dust music in here. Oh, oh, what, what, what team is this? And then you hear fucking Schnitzky. And he's finally back. We got Schnitzky yeah. on Raw. Yeah, they, yeah. they call yeah. Schnitzky a foot fetish freak. So I guess that wasn't just a non sequitur at Mania. Is his character that he's just has a foot fetish on Heat or whatever? I, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Does anyone who but, watches oh. Heat please write in to the show? It's oh, me. But, yeah, no, this whole line. <laughs> Because it's Foot Fetish Schnitzky, the Prince of Perver- Perversion Gold Dust, and then uh, Special Eugene. And I, like, I, I heard this, and it just, the way I think Joey Siles said this, I literally wrote, someone needs to call in Benson and Stabler for this one. <laughs> oh like, this just sounds <laughs> Nico making an 85 year, an octogenarian reference, bro. Yeah, to this, all of our this... octogenarians out there, give us a subscribe. Hit the like button. Share, share, share. Yeah, it, 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 the way they said it just sounded creepy. I'm sorry. Um, it's okay. Not so, fault. you know, this match was very weird, like, pace-wise. Cause, so we have, like, Goldust start off the match, and Goldust does not look good in the ring. He this is the good. worst we've seen Goldust. It's bad. I have yeah. fat Goldust written down here. <laughs> yeah, easily. He, yeah. um... He's having a tough time working with Eugene. I don't know like how well of a worker actually Eugene is, or if he's just doing a bit. But look, I want to say that like watching this match, I commented to Ty. I was like, dude, Eugene seems like he can wrestle. Like he he at least to me seemed like he was the ring general for this. He's, yeah, he was he was really the main focus, and I'll get to that later. Why this is one of the weirdest tag matches and how they set yeah, up. Please, Johnny gets in the ring. Johnny's flipping around. He's doing some crazy shit. Nikki's doing some cool stuff. Mikey seems very uh very rough in the ring. I don't think he's he fits in with the other two right now. Um, so Eugene's getting his ass just pum- pummeled, killed, just, just destroyed, and he tags in Schnitzky. And Schnitzky, you're like, okay, I haven't seen Schnitzky do anything. He gets up, does the coolest fucking raddest, just big boot, and fucks up his back. <laughs> I don't know what happened to where Schnitzky died like that. Yeah, he hits the move and then just crumbles. He's to like, the ground oh my and back, and then the Eugene, who's now just corpsed over the ring rope because he got fucking destroyed, and hot tag Schnitzky, and Schnitzky goes and tags in Eugene. And rolls out of the ring, and I'm like, what? <laughs> and then Eugene gets pushed back in the ring. Johnny hits a trouble in paradise. It, insane shit. And gets the win. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what? Why did he get Eugene back in the ring? He was corpsing. Yeah, I don't know if we're legally allowed to show Snitsky just dying after hitting the big boot. But we can try to get if we there. are, hey, yeah, we're going to try. And by we, I mean Ty. Yeah, shout out to Yeah, look at stuff. that. Holy crap. It's like when you, yeah, it's, everybody that listens to this is an old man now. It's like when you stand up and your leg just doesn't quite go with you and then you just fall down like, ah. it's one of those, but it's Snitsky, he's a professional athlete. And there are, uh, J- <clears throat> Joey and Jerry, by the way, coach not on commentary this week. Thank Fucking God. Fucking incredible. This was actually a good episode. I know the three things we've described, but like this was the only good show we've seen. Oh, but anyway, I forgot to mention so. during the match, it did get cut to in the back, and Vince was just chilling watching TV, and Candace gives him a a drink and sits on his lap, and he's just mm-hmm. he's just chilling there. He's mad mad relaxing around his day yeah. off. Well, yeah, you, you see what I mean by this is just him gooning and coming. <laughs> he's gooning and coming to the Spirit Squad match. 
Is yeah, it really that there's it, a woman there? Yeah. What did I maybe literally want? Well, this is the Vince Climax show right now. You got oh the my. cheerleading match, buff men beating up those with mental disabilities who was getting assaulted by two buff and oh my. Well, one fat man. Yeah. That's literally what guy. I... But yeah, so Joey and Jerry go on a sick line of three jokes in a row about Eugene. Uh, we've got his whole family got more nuts than planters. Oh. Solid peanut joke. Uh, I'm assuming this was Jerry saying about Eugene there was too much chlorine in the gene pool. Oh, fuck, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Which, it, you shouldn't say that, but that is a no, solid that's... joke. And then Joey yeah, clips, yeah, there's no lifeguard either. Oh, <laughs> come on, man. Joey was on it tonight. We'll talk more about that later. Yeah. Joey was fired up. Yeah, and then, yeah, so, it also, Kofi Kingston stole the trouble in paradise from Spirit Squad Johnny. This is bullshit. Johnny Jeter deserves better. I agree. I love OVW. I'm, I'm, I'm shooting a promo. Let's get OVW on Raw constantly. Let's go. If you want. Huh? It's I want, if you want OVW okay. Unlimited, but we are stuck with WWE oh, Unlimited. Hell, Nico, dude. tell me what happened. Well, you know, Maria has her kissing cam gimmick. You know, goes fine. But uh, Mickey is quite angry that she got pinned by Maria. You know, kind of roughs her up a bit. And then she does a pretty good awesome ddt to her i actually really liked it to just put a flat out and down and that's kind of the end of the unlimited segment yeah uh i guess they're setting up maria and mickey james why okay yeah why why i, I don't know. dead yeah uh, that yeah that's the what other yeah. baby face could ashley do, masara yeah could do victoria oh baby yeah. face oh <laughs> shit you're right oh god so it's like ashley masala no uh, Tori Wilson? No. Has it, Ashley been on the show in like two months? No. No, not since she was the I think tied up right by Mickey. Yeah. Yep, that was the last time we saw her. That's true. Oh my. She's still in hell with Jack. Yeah. Hey Jack. I miss Jack, dude. Yeah. Me too. We all. Well, at least we Jack. got to see him and know that he lived. He's not in jail, at least. And then we we cut backstage after all that. And Eugene gets a promo with Todd Grisham. <laughs> yeah, it seems as though the Spirit Squad have just dragged Eugene back to the promo area and demanded that Todd ask Eugene, hey, how'd it feel to lose? And Eugene says, well, it felt bad, but my uncle Eric Bischoff said you should never quit. And then he takes a beat. And then he goes, uh, wait a minute. Uncle Eric told me to quit every day. He's a butt. Hey, Eric, at least I still have a job. Neener, neener, neener. <laughs> I support Eric Bischoff getting fucking ruined at <laughs> any and all comers. Speaking of comers, this was clearly a Vince Common moment. Kiss yeah, he must butt, have been... Uncle Eric, at least I still have my job. Yeah, he must have still... He must have been mad at Bischoff again about <laughs> something. Yeah. And... Yeah, so we'll f Eric Bischoff will respond in four years when he and Hulk Hogan take over TNA. Woo! Listeners, in seven years when we start covering 2010 TNA, we'll pick up on this, I assure you. But... But then Matt Stryker shows up oh, and no. starts beating up Eugene with a dictionary. He held that uh, dictionary at him too. Yeah, it's very. Dude, he holds it like a Bible. It was awesome. He's about to fucking yeah. preach the, the multiplication times table, dude. That's crazy. Like, how, why would he do yeah. that? Is this is this what happens? What a baby face. Is this what? Yeah, this happened to me at school all the time. Oh my god. Yeah, I would never I, go. I, so. Now, I, I I don't know what it's like in that environment, but if I was a teacher, <laughs> I'd probably beat my kids with a dictionary book as well. All right, put that on the record. <laughs> Can I get that as a quote? Can I get no. that on a shirt? Can I get that on a boat? <laughs> yeah, you don't have to Ooh. red bubble this or whatever the fuck. Yeah, no. You can buy a picture of Nico beating up a child <laughs> with a dictionary. Yes, please. 5,000 patrons. <laughs> yeah, 5,000 patrons. We will find a child and Nico will shoot, kick the shit out of it with a dictionary. This is how That's we true. make millions. <laughs> this is true. This is true. But more importantly, we've got this week in wrestling history. Oh, no, I don't want that. 
the voice of God, Vince McMahon, comes Sorry, over man. to talk about something very serious. And as it turns out, it's just about him and Shane beating God. And they just recap that match for three minutes. Listen to our Backlash episode to hear more about that. But most of this shit isn't on the show this week, and it's better for it. After this, we then cut to the locker room where Shawn Michaels and the Big Show and some guy are looking at some guy. the TV despondently. Come on, listen. So Sean, Sean's in the back. He's leading his Bible study with his homie Big Show and Charlie Haas. And they're just hanging out. And then the Spirit Squad interrupts them. And they're like, hey, Sean, guess what? And then Sean looks at him, but he doesn't know what he's looking at because he's looking at, like, two sides of the room. And so, like, Nikki's like, up here, up here. <laughs> you got the night off, pal. Guess what? You're going to be a ref in the next match. And I got a shirt for you. And they pull out the May 19th shirt. Just says May 19th all over it. And it's ye bright yellow. And he said, and then uh, they have a tough time because they're trying to put it over his head and put it on him. What a weird segment. And they're just fucking shimming it. And they said, you're going to fucking ref Rob Conway versus Kane. <laughs> Get ready for that. Have fun. And then they just dip out. Sean, Sean didn't know Michaels. who that was. <laughs> yeah, Shawn Michaels looks so sad. The Big <laughs> Show so looks sad. angry. I forget where Charlie Haas went, but they look very sad. Yeah, it, big, at least the Big Show, he was consoling Shawn. It's like, hey, man, you got this. You've been around long enough. You get, you'll get, you figure something out. It's like, good on you, Big Baby Face Big Show. Yeah, but Charlie Haas was just, he didn't care. He was he was focused on something well, later on. Well, he, he's got a plan. He He's, uh, he's the he's man with the plan. Yeah, and then Brian Kendrick stole indeed. that gimmick. Yeah, speaking of people that believe in the reptilian elite, Kane is here. Oh, yeah. And we get a recap oh. of Big Show versus Kane from last night. Shout out to May 19th. That so Kane so comes out. We see a sign that says HBK loves the Lord. Thank you, person with sign. Uh -huh. And then Rob Conway, our put upon hero. They keep making Shawn Michaels look like Christ, but really, Rob Conway is the Christ like figure on this show. Just look at him. Everyone should want to be him. Look this is him. our hero. This should be our main eventer. I don't know who backstage ruined Rob Conway's career, but they need to be stopped. I assume it's Triple H. <laughs> just look at him, and then look Triple at H him. is just getting angry because he can't be him. I, yes, I can't be him. I can't look like him. Everybody in the world wants to look like him. Then every time, like, you know, H is just chilling in the back. He's probably has his head down. He's chilling in the closet like he was at Mania. And he just hears the music, just look at me. And he just fucking throws the TV at the wall. He goes, ah, ah, I want I want that man H, gone. H snorting his Italian Portuguese bull semen that he I want it from gone. his Brazilian <laughs> trainer. And Rob Conway just rolls out of bed looking like this. Rob Conway doesn't even go to the gym. He eats 17 cheeseburgers a day. And he looks like this. Oh, my. Never on any kind of gas. Just full natty. So Rob off. Conway's coming out. We get the epic, we must all stop man bear pig sign. You guys remember when libertarian dumbasses that made a bad cartoon tried to do a thing about climate change and got fucking owned for being stupid? Damn, that's crazy. Oh, and then man. Shawn Michaels gets into the oh, ring. My God. And they start patting down Rob Conway. And it should have been me... It should have been Nico. It should have been all of us. Why can't we do this? Look at but me. But then, this dastardly, dastardly person, the hell is rubbing off on Shawn Michaels from Vince McMahon, it seems. This is not a Christ-like thing to do. This is a very Judas-like thing to do. He punches Rob Conway directly in the penis. They can't do that. Betrayal. Betrayal. And Rob Conway is on the floor. His Be dick crazy. is 19 inches long and super sensitive. Shawn Michaels knew. Shawn Michaels has a record of everyone's <laughs> hog. He knew who was the most sensitive to it. So Rob Conway is rolling around on the ground. And Shawn takes off his big yellow May 19th shirt, revealing <clears throat> that Shawn has a ref shirt under it. And he puts the shirt on Rob Conway. Rob Conway has the May 19th shirt on. Betrayal. This is Betrayed. fucking bullshit. Rob Conway has been robbed once again. They, Rob desperately rolling out of the ring in pain. And then Kane comes out. He sees Rob Conway. He sees May 19th. May 19th. Uh, and he starts 
beating the shit out of Rob Conway on the outside and throws Ooh, him in the kill. ring. And Shawn Michaels, as ref, just perches on the corner ropes because he can't even stand on the ground that Rob Conway is standing on because he knows what he did. He knows he's ruined Rob Conway's career. He knows he's a failure as a fucking person and a wrestler. But he has to deal with it. So he's up on the corner ropes. And Rob Conway just trying to leave. Sean comes out of the ring, brings him back in, starts waving the May 19th shirt like a flag to a bowl. Kane big boots Rob. Sean goes outside and grabs a trash can, just holds it up over his head while looking at the ramp. Kane takes it, and then Sean's like, what? Where did the trash can go? Oh, no. To avoid seeing Kane smashing Rob Conway with this trash can. Kane choke slams Rob Conway, and he just goes to leave. Because even he knows this is bullshit. But then Sean grabs a microphone and just starts saying, May 19th, May 19th, May 19th, May 19th. Because Sean is threatened for his main event spot by Rob Conway, I'm pretty sure. Just like and Tr- then Kane, yeah, dude. Yeah, and then Kane comes back in, tombstones Rob Conway, gets the one, two, three on a fast count. Kane wins. Rob Conway has been jobbed once again. No, this is bullshit. That is such bullshit. Actually, yeah. man, this whole. <laughs> I, honestly, like I kind of liked how the match went to be real. Like, as much as the portrayal of Rob Conway, I, I like that Shawn Michaels wasn't a complete fucking idiot. You know, because, I mean, that's clearly who they're pushing. Wrongly, but surely. Yeah, but, like... But... Oh, go I, I, No, yeah, I just, I really liked the, that... So, you know, as a bit of, like, Spirit Squad is booking all the match. Spirit Squad's like, hey, we have a good idea to, like, set up Shawn Michaels. Put him, put the shirt on him. And then Shawn Michaels is like, ha ha ha, bring out Rob Conway first to the ring so then I can put the shirt on him and then let him be killed. Like, it was, yes, Shawn Michaels is just dick dastardly, but I I do like that there was, uh, even in this just, like, little match, uh, a nice story arc that unfolded throughout the match mm-hmm. where, yeah, Shawn Michaels wasn't just a weird goober. He actually, like, had a plot and did something, so... I'm on board, honestly. Like, it sucks what happened, but at least it was done well. I yeah. I don't understand why. Now, hear me out. They yeah. get Rob Conway in the back. He's getting ready for his match. They already planned that they're going to shove this shirt on this man. And so the, what they do is they oil the fuck out of Rob Conway. And <laughs> Sean struggled so hard to put that shirt on Rob when he was on the ground. He just couldn't get it. He's, he had to, well, like, shimmy it down him. You still want him to look good. I know, but, like, it was so yeah. fucked that Sean couldn't do it. Well, counterpoint, if you had the opportunity to rub down Rob Conway with oil, would you really do it quick? Yeah, you're right. No, you're right. Yeah, uh. I, now, I will tell you, um, fucking, like, like I said, Rob and Sean, I thought did awesome. This fucking Kane May nineteenth shit is the fucking sh- like it's complete fucking trash. It suck, I it fucking hate suck. this fucking shitty <laughs> ass fucking storyline. Like this is the stupidest fucking ending ever. So Kane gets mad at May nineteenth. Uh, he picks him up, choke slams him, leaves him for dead. Fine, whatever. You know it makes sense. He's fucking animal. He's a beast. And you say May nineteenth, he loses it. And, you know, Shawn Michaels, again, a very clever move. Oh. I love it. He goes, May 19th, knowing that fucking Kane's not going to know who actually says it. He, he's, he's so enraged, he can't tell. He's almost like an animal. So he just keeps yelling, get those the mic at Rob. So Kane comes back to the ring, hits the tombstone. I'm like, all right, all right, putting him dead for dead. And then he pins him. Well, and he's got to get the dead. dub, dude. Listen, no, don't you talk no, shit about no. Kane. Oh, shit. Bull fucking shit. He was about to walk out of that fucking ring because he's enraged. Because that's the whole fucking gimmick. I'm mad. I don't think about wrestling. I think about just killing guys. And then he gets madder. And then he respects the rules of wrestling. That is fucking Listen, stupid. I have a brain oh. blast moment. No, I have a brain blast moment, Nico. That could be spoiler territory. Oh. So let's just say, hey... Guys listening, this might be cut out because it, it might be spoiler content. Mm-hmm. Do you think mm-hmm. that they took this Kane gimmick and gave it to 
what's going to be the new Kane as Festus. Because when that bell rang, he went crazy. Mm -hmm. Do you think they said, wait a minute, we're cooking with this Kane shit. We got to do it with Festus. Because uh, I... essentially it was like May 19th, he's he's locked in. He's going to kill yeah, that person. But he also follows the rules of the match. <laughs> but, but, it, but the thing is, he didn't. He wasn't going to until he got madder. That's what's stupid. Listen, once you get so mad, Kane's ultra instinct well, clicked on. And all he knows is the rules of the ring and how to dismantle his opponent, Nico. All right? I will not yeah. have you besmirch. <laughs> Oh, I'm the red machine. I'm besmirching. I'm besmirching. How fucking dare you? I I dare. I dare. Huh. May 19th's it, coming up, buddy. Can, You're going to find if out. He, if he just always got mad, but he respected the rules of the ring, that would be fine. But this, <laughs> this, this was stupid. You're going to find out, buddy. He's not really I, an honorable guy. But, yeah, well, he was pretty honorable at being even more pissed off than when he was less pissed off and dishonorable. Oh, damn. Oh man! Fuck you know, speaking of domination, we got ECMO, dude. Bro, and the slam of the week. ECMO. Well, all right, hold guys. on. Yeah. Okay. All right. More. Okay. No. Here's a better. All right. Here's a better fucking transition. Okay. Speaking of getting dominated, we all want to get dominated by the star Lara Croft of Tomb Raider Legend. <laughs> the WWE Slam of the Week is brought to you by Tomb Raider Legend this week. Dave, tell us about Tomb it. Tomb Raider Legends in stores yeah. now. I tried That's how my you best. fucking host, Ty. That's I, how you fucking host. I tried my Damn. best. Ty man. is the resident <laughs> Jonathan Coachman of Raw Down. Oh, I'm the right, coach. Right, that's welcome, a little oh, far. Welcome to Raw Down. I'm coach. <laughs> oh, fuck. There's two. He is here. I oh, fucking told you. Oh my god. Anyway, the slam of the week is a recap recap from a week or two ago. Whenever that was Umaga, yesterday, dude. <laughs> was it yesterday, dude? Backlash yes. was yesterday. Oh my god, it was yesterday. When Umaga tied Ric Flair up in the ropes, hit him with a thousand headbutts, spiked him, and murdered him with no recourse. So keep that in mind when you are picking up Tomb Raider Legends in stores now. Oh, okay. Yeah, I might have to check it out. Maybe we'll play it on the pod. Ooh, maybe. We'll have to so, because it's sponsored. <laughs> very true. Picks, picks a topic to goon off of. Vince is just full goon. <laughs> you know Vince loves them polygons, folks. So, uh, after getting a recap of Umaga, our boy Alejandro Prada comes out. And he goes, ha ha, listen to me. And then he points at some guy who's already in the ring, who we will then we will later learn is Rory Fox. Oh, I don't know man. if his name ever actually gets announced no. or if he just gets killed. And then Joey Styles goes, oh, that's Rory Fox. He's dead. But uh, Estrada goes to go from the man who destroyed the nature boy, who defeated the 16 time champion, Ric Flair, to you. <laughs> Are you scared? You better. And then he summons Umaga, <clears throat> who runs down to the ring. They ring the bell immediately. Umaga runs him into the corner, punches him in the head a few times, and then picks him up and throws him over his head, over his back, across the ring. This shit was crazy. Then dr picks him up, drags him to the middle of the ring, stands over him, Armando takes one of his big penis doink cigars out of his pocket, points at Roy Fox, and then breaks it in half to sentence him to death. To which Umaga then summarily picks him up, spikes him, and kills him. And the crowd cheers as this poor man, Roy Fox, is just immediately executed and killed before their eyes. You know, once again, Umaga has just squashed some random shitter for seemingly no reason. But uh, hey, I'm here for it. This is this is how you do a squash. I think it's also wild that this man is not just like a local local shitter because he was with Heartland Wrestling Association, which WWE was like farming people through that system. OVW was another one at the time, but he was a one-time heavyweight champ, eight-time cruiserweight champ, and he was a tag team champ with Matt Striker in that little little uh, promotion. So they just kind of like were like, hey, let's see how you look. 
Oh, okay. There you go. So we'll wild. never talk this to you again. This is the first OVW guy who's been killed either okay. by Umaga. I think, yeah, because it's usually just like local, local people that don't, are not part of anything. Yeah, no, we had, well, what's his face uh, a couple weeks ago got killed by Umaga too. Umaga's like second match. Is it? Uh, it's, it's so weird. Isn't Ohio Championship Wrestling, or Ohio Valley Wrestling not in Ohio? Correct. And yeah, also Heartland, up. Heartland Wrestling Association is in Ohio. So <laughs> hey, you love it. You love it. Um, but yeah, I cannot wait for our boy Umaga to fight people other than a man who's 900 years old, the Nature Boy, and a bunch of people who get squashed. But he's really revving up. So stay tuned for more of that. I think Martin has good, something to tell us about. Uh, good fun squash. Alejandro Estrada. So no. <laughs> <laughs> Armando Alejandro Estrada follows in the proud WWE tradition of being an ethnic stereotype of the wrong kind of ethnicity. That's right. So after either, I think it was Backlash or the Raw before that, we looked into Armando and found out that he's actually Palestinian. He's Palestinian American, rather. Yeah, that's right. So, not... Uh, apparently he's supposed to be Cuban according to Wikipedia. Sure. I, I, that's why he's but, got the cigars, Martin, of course. Yes, only Cubans smoke cigars. That's of course. True. Yes. So, also, as it turns out, in in OVW, he wrestled as a bodyguard named Osama in Muhammad Hassan's entourage. That's crazy. <laughs> so Muhammad Hassan was apparently in OVW and this guy was a bodyguard, but he was not called up with Muhammad Hassan. He remained in OVW wrestling as an anti-American character. And then when Paul Heyman began booking OVW, he changed Osama's name to Osama Rodriguez Alejandro to make him half Cuban. Yep. <laughs> And then, Thank you, Paul Heyman. and then he you became full it, Cuban. <laughs> he also changed his name. Like, his real name is just Armando Estrada now. He, he got rid of his birth name. Yes, he changed it from uh, Hazem Ali to Armando Estrada. <laughs> He's just Cuban oh. now. <laughs> He's just Cuban now, folks. It's that easy. <laughs> he appeared in a Cypress Hill music video in 2010. Yo! Yo! Let's go. Shout out to Armando Estrada. That's insane. Oh, dude, is anyone feeling a little under the weather? No. I think I think Nico needs to tell us about someone's getting a little sick. Well, Nico, <laughs> Nico woke the fuck up. He's strapping in. Well, he put away his uh, he put away his Ray action figure, and now he's ready. Put away his signed Candice Michelle Playboy. <laughs> nah, nah, I, I didn't get that. Ty refused to buy it for the show. Oh come on, you can't. <laughs> Peel the curtain back a little bit. You don't have to do that. Uh, could, <gasps> I said it. Uh, you know what? The truth of the matter is, it's SmackUp's fault. They stole it. Also, I am not just the women's correspondent. I am also the religious and medical correspondent as well. And Candace is in bad condition. She is very thankful to Vince as he is clearly groping her again and gooning his ass off. Uh, that she is so thankful for getting her cold cured. And Vince is like, well, you know, I have all these powers, so you're welcome. And then she tells that she's got a new terrible condition that needs to be healed. Which Vince is like, what is it? And she gets, I need my labiagitis. I have labiagitis. My I need some healing. She... When she says labiagitis, yeah, I'm fucking he's not joking. Dying. This is yeah. not a bit. She says she has labiagitis. Oh, yeah. yeah, folks. If you remember when he cured her chest cold, was when he uh, grabbed her chest and uh, assaulted her. her. Yeah, it was a little nicer about back. While she's full on grabbing titty here too. It's Amen, disgusting. Brother. Anyway, yeah. so uh, I, let me tell you. If any of you are confused at labiagitis, so was Vince. Because there was a good five to ten seconds where he's just kind of like, huh? looking like, what? Labiagitis? Yeah, Dr. McMahon does huh? not know how to cure labiagitis, so he had to think in his encyclopedic mind and go, yeah. where, where is it? <laughs> what am I, and, uh, how do I help this? Huh? Yeah, yeah, and he's just flipping through the pages, and eventually it clicks. He finds Oh. Oh, 
meningitis. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, him and Candace get a little frisky for a few seconds. And let me tell you, this this is the grossest few seconds of the show. What? No way. What? Uh, hey, look, if you want to jerk off to Vince Cooming, go ahead. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I, yeah, I want to point out Vince asks if her labiagitis is acute. And she says, yeah, it is kind of cute. <laughs> this is true. I missed that one. Yeah, she did say it's kind of cute. And, you know, all of a sudden, wow, Vince is having the time of his life. A shadow looks over <laughs> from the background. Uh, and Candace freaks out. It's Triple H. Oh, no. Standing over Vince. The game. And <laughs> Vince stands up like, oh, oh, oh tri Triple H. And fucking uh, Triple H says, is that a flashlight in your pocket? Or are you happy to see me? Uh, come and on, man. Vince is like, D -d 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 it's just cold. And fucking Trips is like, yeah, I can see how swollen it is. Ugh. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Like I, I, Triple H, hold up! Triple H is cock watching tonight. Oh, sound the alarm! He's cock watching. Spin Triple H, what? looking at Vince. Woo! Look at him! Yeah, I, I am positive his father-in-law wanted him to say that to make sure that you know. Hey, look! I got a big. Cause it's not even like a insult. Like, yo, you cock swollen. You got like what? Is that a like, flashlight? Why he had to say a flashlight though? Because it's big. Like, flashlights are big when you think of, like, a flashlight in your head, right? He's basically wrote Triple H to say, you have a big cock. <laughs> nice cock. Bottom. Nice <laughs> cock, dude. Nice, yeah. <laughs> but it was supposed to come off like an insult, but I, I, I don't get the insult. Anyways, Vince offers Triple H a guest referee spot tonight. And we're in this kind of weird zone because, I mean, clearly Triple H is less becoming, like, the the game, the reign of tarot heel that he is, and he's kind of lightening up, but, you know, he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. if I'm gonna do this for you, you gotta scratch my back. Oh. If Kenny wins, I want a championship match next week with all of the Spirit Squad banned from ringside. Now, Vince... Now, what's weird is Vince this whole time did not condone the backlash actions. He's like, how dare you? You that saw your opponents after the match. You spine busted a poor woman. And I was like, holy shit, Vince, what the fuck are you on? Uh, anyways, like, it's like the one time he's like being a good boss, but it's, it's he's not. So, you know, like I said, uh, Vince decides, fuck you, Triple H. So he's like, hey, let me let me make something clear. I'm your boss. I make the rules. Uh, what you call me back there, old man? Well, you're going to be an old man if, uh, you know, that's uh, when you want to get that next title shot there, pal. Oh. And Triple H, a little pissed off, but he, he knows <clears throat> his place in this case, you know, uh, intimidated. Vince McMahon's got a full-on erection at this point still. So he just decides it's better to bow out before he starts coming. And he, he walks off screen. Another uh, time that Triple H stares longingly like he's about to kiss somebody and he won't. Nah, he, 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 I wouldn't want him to do that, though. That's a stepdad, yeah. dude. Nah, nah, we're good. Yeah, Triple H has a purity ring, so he, yeah, we don't, he can't just kiss We don't anybody. condone that. No way. Yeah, Triple H is not close enough related to Vince for Vince to want to kiss them. That's yeah, true. true. Yeah, it's true. This is true. Um, I, this was a fucking dumb segment. I mean, it's so stupid, labiagitis and all that. But you know what? It was so dumb that part was fun. And I thought the kind of flip floppy of like, are we on the same page or not with uh, Triple H and Vince was quite good. For what it needed to do and what it needed to say. It's just very weird because, like, Triple H has been, like, you know, getting his way and now he's not getting his way. But for what reason? Like, oh, because he called him old man. But they were, like, yeah. doing shit together. Oh, whatever. Man, but, fuck but it. The, there is a history because um, well, yeah. this whole Shawn Michaels feud started because he said one thing to Vince. So, this is in character. Makes sense. Trips is just going crazy. He he, yeah. he freaking mode right now. He's in the freak mode. Rips is going crazy. Vince is edging. 
and we go from that edging to another oh, kind of edging. Yeah, we're in we the got cutting, the cutting edge. edge. Yeah, yeah, we're yes, here. Sir. Oh, so Lita's here, and guess what? She's not wearing a fucking V-neck to her hoo-ha. It's crazy, man. She's wearing an actual shirt. She looks nice. She's got a nice little like vest on. I like the edge shirt. And she's like, you know what? I got to pay respects to the most watched champion in the last five years. The rated R superstar. Yeah, and then you, you think you know him. Edge is here. Awesome. He's fucking bruised up from the night before. He should have won. He should have won, folks. But he didn't. <laughs> Edge Edge comes out. He cuts a promo. It's not a bad promo. Uh, he starts dogging on Joey Styles for whatever reason. He just hates Joey Styles. He's like, that third-rate ECW reject. Oh my god, Joey, you suck. And Joey's just like melting his chair like, god damn, dude. Why are they cooking me? And uh, Edge goes, you know what? I got outclassed, you know, like, you know, Triple H and John Cena. I was beating their ass last night and they t- took it from me. This is bullshit. But you know what? I'm going to forget about that because you know who made my career? This man right here because I stole the show at Mania. My opponent. The man I killed at Mania, Mick Foley's here. Mick Foley's, wow, he gets a big pop. They, they love Mick here. And then Mick Foley decides to cut a very, very good promo. I don't know where he, where is he? Is this the first time we've seen him since Mania? I think so. I think so. Okay, so, you know, he seems a little raspy. I don't know what's going on. You know, like he just, he doesn't sound, like he sounds like he went to war the night before. Yeah, Edge did. So he's like, Edge, seems that I haven't forgotten our match either. And to tell you the truth, for weeks on end, that's all the match I thought about for 24-7. I watched the tape. I searched my soul trying to figure out where things had gone wrong. But the more I watched the tape, the more I searched my soul. I figured out things hadn't gone wrong for me that night. Things had gone very, very right. You know, at WrestleMania, I was meaner than ever before. More prepared, more focused, more hardcore. Oh, oh. He's going to get a little extreme, you know. He said that was one of the greatest hardcore matches of his career. I don't think so. I don't know why he said that. Even as wrestling history, come on. You just had an awesome hardcore match six years prior with Triple H. You probably don't remember it, though, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mick. Oh, no, no, no. That wasn't Mick. That was Cactus Jack. I'm so That's sorry, true. guys. My, I apologize. Oh my I almost, god, K-fabe, brother, K-fabe. dude! I am sorry. Come that was, on. Mick Foley's probably best hardcore match, so I apologize. You know, he calls Edge the toughest son of a bitch in the WWE. That they both are, and they shake hands, and he extends his hand to Lita, and then he kisses her cheek, and it was very weird, very strange. So now, like, Foley's getting a little little nicer to Edge, and he goes, don't get me wrong, just because I lost the match, it doesn't mean I didn't get to that finding of WrestleMania moment, because I did. Let's take a look at it, and they show, the, it's weird that they're showing, like, a month ago. Uh, there it is, that's my moment. Looking in your eyes and knowing you'd never be the same again, knowing I'll all be downhill for Edge, knowing that you would never want to go through that type of hell again. And you know what? I want to go through this again. Let's do this tonight in Columbus, Ohio. Gets a little cheap pop. Oh. Edge wants, he says, this is very, very cute. This is a fine speech. You wait to, for me to fucking die in a triple threat match. You wait till I get spine busted, sledgehammered. My girlfriend died last week. You want a rematch now? Next week, I'll take you on any match that you want. But not now. And then Foley says, he, uh, he said, well, how fitting it is that I'm on the cutting edge. Because next week on Raw, I'll be cutting edge with barbed wire, razor wire, thumbtack, any sharp object. I want you to go home and rest. God's sakes, rest up from that strep throat. You will beg for mercy next week. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. And uh, Mick Mick fucking sold that shit. I was like, damn. This is... I'm I'm, I'm fucking rubbing my hands together. I'm licking my lips. I'm doing the LL Cool J. I'm licking my hand. Uh, uh, I'm ready for next week, dude. Dude, nobody (laughs) does it like Mick Foley does it. No. They really don't. When Mick Foley's not trying to sell a book, he's, I mean, hot take, Mick Foley's really good. Oh, I love, you got three Hall of Famers in the ring, of course they're gonna fucking spit. Yeah, Yeah, but I don't know, Mick Foley I think is one of the greatest, like, of all time, 
he he's just like someone for, you for stuff like this. You don't remember how good he is on the mic because he has a lot of goofy shit like as mankind yeah. or um you know, just trying to be a badass or stuff, but when he can actually just cut a promo cuz he can connect with the audience so well. Yeah. It's so cool to see it. I love it. The, the, yeah, it's not a lot like him man. He is one of the goats for a reason. This is probably the best edges done since we've been watching too. Like he did a good job. Yeah. yeah. This was no. the yeah. most I've been into Edge, and I'm not. I'm not really an Edge head, to be honest. But... Been oh, fanging and banging, lately? baby. And uh, Lita's not drunk off her ass like she was at Backlash, so it all works, <laughs> dude. I still can't get over the fucking heat segment where she's just like, Maria, are you trying to fight me? <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, it's so bad. But yeah, you know, awesome segment, awesome cutting edge. I wish Emerald was here to see it. But maybe maybe he'll be here next week and uh, we'll, we'll watch it. We'll get him. We'll get him back. He's okay. fired, folks. No, he's not fired. He's, he's fired. fired. Listen, man. Sometimes oh. you can't make it. Sometimes you get stuck on the runway. Sometimes you get stuck. I'll have and... him fired. He's in New England. You know, can't get him out. He's watching Boston Celtics in the playoffs. And I said, Emerald, you don't want to be there. And he said, I want to be there. I'm like, all right, fair enough. So he took the week off. But we, he'll, yeah, he'll be here for uh, the hardcore Emerald, match. Useless and lazy, just like all the Irish. Oh. I have oh. come on, man. To point out here. Uh, we don't need no railroads. I agree. There's a sign that somebody holds up that says "Rated R Stupid Star." Get fucked, Edge. Absolutely oh, devastating. Did That's also good. at the end of this, we get a P- we get a truly awful PNG like they always have advertising the Kenny versus Cena with Triple H ref. And Ty, if you could find that, throw it up on the screen. Because the Triple H, he's in the background, very small, in a ref shirt, looking extremely sad, at about 2P. Yes. It's a tremendous look at him. Yeah, I... I yeah. thought it was funny that the the PNG, like, you know, it did the moving shot, so they show John Cena spin the belt. And why would you do that? Because then it, like, pauses and it just, <laughs> the fucking belt's blurry as shit. It's hilarious. Yeah, yeah it's the belt's blurry. <laughs> Kenny looks okay. And Tiny Triple H Tiny is Triple in the H. background looking sad with the ref <laughs> shirt on. It's, hey, fan- it's fantastic oh, stuff. There he is. Again, looks, yeah, it looks like it's one Tiny of Triple H. H. It's Tiny Triple H, dude. I'm going to get to <laughs> Oh no! Do you know what, Joe? We forgot a sign from earlier, and I just got to just bring it up real quick. Oh. God was in Italy. <laughs> oh, God was in Italy. God was in Italy, dude. Yes. Fucking, that was during the Rob Conway match. I fucking I lost it. That sign, dude. God, God was, was in Italy. Is an awesome sign. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> God truly was gone, because now we have to deal with my favorite guys on this show. Yes. We get a recap of Shelton Benjamin and Rob Van Dam from yesterday. As a reminder, I shoot fell asleep during that match. So that happened. And now we get Chris Masters versus Rob Van Dam in the Master Lock Challenge. Chris Masters comes out first, gets on the mic. He says, last night's match was a fluke. And if Carlio gets in my business again, they'll be spitting teeth instead of apples. <laughs> He sounded more confident than he usually does on the mic. He did Good not job, do a bad job. He, he, I mean, yeah. he didn't seem like he, uh, like, he's young. So I think he's around 22, 23 at this point. Yeah, I think he's 23. So him being on the mic, he's not flubbing up any lines, and he seems to be, like, because before he's fucking up constantly. He's just very new at this yeah. point. But, yeah, they actually good. all did pretty okay during this. Granted, Shocking. Most of their match is spent not on their match in a purely base move. <laughs> anyway, so he says Rob Van Dam can do it all except break the master lock. And then RVD comes out, and the cup chair is in the middle of the ring. And oh, no. I don't know why they keep doing this, but RVD is also very loath to get in position for this challenge that he has accepted. He keeps looking back, doesn't want to sit in the cup chair, doesn't seem to trust Chris Masters to do this. Chris yeah, Masters, keep... as he always is is very nice about this he doesn't try to cheat in the master lock challenge like ever he treats this as a real thing when edge came in and beat up john cena when he was in the master lock he was very mad about it 
So Chris Bass very slowly, very nicely gets him in the hold, yoinks him up out of the cup chair, spins him around once, and then and then uh, Shelton Benjamin comes out and just starts beating the shit out of Rob Van Dam. Chris Bass like, come on, dude. And then Carlito comes out to save RVD. Everybody starts fighting. And then the worst spirit squad member, Nikki, comes out. Oh. Because he's got a special cheer for them. Says, There's no need to scream. There's no need to shout. The four of you are now wrestling in a tag team bout. Hooray. Oh so my. we go to commercial and come back. We've got Chris Masters and Shelton Benjamin versus Carlito and Rob Van Dam. Show me, Ben me. We've got two guys that can't work. And we've got two guys that have absolutely negative chemistry. Rob Van Dam is going very quickly down the shit list on the raw down pecking order. Oh, no. It's incredible. But we're back from commercial. What do you believe it, folks? Chris Masters is working a hold. It's RVD true. fights out, but he's pulled <laughs> back by his hair back to a hold. We cut backstage in a theme. Candace and Vince are making out. Candace's tits are basically out. Yeah. Sexual assault. They that it. was insane, yes, dude. I like legit shivered in my chair because I was like, "What the fuck?" Like he just like pulled off the the it's straps crazy. and he was just putting his finger like right above the line. I'm like, "Oh, oh, god, what the fuck?" Like, why are they doing this during the match? Too yeah, <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> very close to the line here. Yeah, this was. Uh, it was crazy, dude. It was crazy. It was bad. Yeah. Back you in the ring. Would never do this. Shelton oh. Benjamin. Go ahead, Nico. Yeah, I fucking forgot. Uh, but before, like, when he, like, King buried the mess lock challenge, like, while he was sitting down, because he says, I don't think there's much to prove by picking the master lock outside another notch on his bell. Like, he's saying this isn't worth RVD's time. Which, which is bullshit, because, like, it's actually a good segment. I like the master lock is. challenge, because yeah. it's just something that somebody has to break at some point, and it might actually mm -hmm. be a big deal when it happens, because yeah. it, he... I don't know. It's protected. Yeah, because he can't have a good match, but he can do the move really well, mm -hmm. and that's it. That's all you need. Yeah. Like, that's bullshit. Like, it looks good. He takes it serious. I mean, these guys like do like, like these guys sell it so hard for him every time. I mean, it's yeah. like, a great segment. So it really made it weird. Like, fucking like King going like, yeah. I don't think there's really much to prove. I'm like. Yeah, I get what he's saying. You got the Intercontinental Championship and money in the bank, but it's like, I mean, I would be saying something like, man, if he can do this, he is sure set to get that WWE Championship. Nah, nah this yeah. doesn't really matter. Yeah, and isn't Jerry supposed to be the heel, like commentator, or like a healer Paula. guy? Like he, he talks more about like, haha, I like the heels a little bit. But yeah. Chris yeah, Masters sucks shit, fuck him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So this was a... This, yeah, that that was I, bad. I honestly hate so much when the commentary ruins like a good bit because they have to say some stupid shit, yeah. or they just or they, they act like they don't care, and then it's just like it's gone. It's like um, yeah. this is gonna be a, a current like ten year ago thing with Ascension. If you guys remember that group, they were so dominant oh, yeah. in NXT. They were so dominant. Like they were really fast in the ring, really good. I think that was like when they're at their peak, Victor and uh, mm -hmm. Connor, and. Yeah. They brought him up to the main roster. They dressed him up like Road Warriors, and then immediately called them uh, clowns, and then nobody yeah. gave a shit about him, and it ruined their fucking career. It did. It's it like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. why would you do this? Like, you build these guys up, and then you just make them look like fools immediately. Yeah, it was fucking dumb. I, I hate it. I hate this shit. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm going to pull up this picture that uh, Dave posted in our chat. What uh, the fuck yeah, is Umaga a part of the Crowland Wikia? <laughs> hey, man. Why is Tom Bombadil here in DK Customs? Is that an AI guy? Anyway. <laughs> That's crazy. That's, That's going on in the guy episode. Guy, guys. What, the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck, man? <laughs> I know, that's Cyrax. He's a bad man. Yeah, Cyrax bad, man. Other than them I dressing down I'm Masters, right. this match was bad. <laughs> Right, go th did you go through it all already? No. Okay, go through this <laughs> no. shit, dude. This match no. is bad, dude. Yeah, I've derailed so them. Kansas's titties were basically out. Now we're back to the ring. Shelton has tagged in, and now he's working his own hold. 
and then he hits a body slam and a backbreaker. We go back to a hold, because I don't know why Shelton and RVD can't have a good match, but they just can't. Show me so, the beat. So we're in this hold. Now we cut to looking at the commentary booth. Joey Styles is handed a note by a ref, and he looks stunned. He explains the Spirit Squad wants to see him right now, so he takes off the headset and leaves. So it's just Jerry Lawler on commentary here. Chris Masters tags back in. More heat on RVD, who eventually gets out and tags in Carlito, who then cleans house, and we get into the finishing segment segment of this match. And it's been fairly long, and most of it has been nothing, and it's been focused either backstage or on the commentary. And frankly, it should be because these guys suck. So, Carlito gets attacked from behind by Chris Masters. He reverses a double suplex from Shelton and Chris into a drop kick. Shelton gets up and super kicks him. RVD super drop kicks Shelton. Chris Masters Irish whips Carlito, gets Carlito into a gorilla press, and Carlito escapes, goes into the bat cracker. Shelton Benjamin grabs a chair. Charlie Haas pops up from the outside, takes the chair from him, and as Shelton's like, hey man, why did you take my chair? Carlito rolls up Shelton, and we get the three. So Carlito and RVD have won. What a, oh. what a weird yeah. finish. Yeah, no, this whole match, you know what? The crowd loved it, so I'm guessing that during the fucking Vince being just way too spicy and fucking the whole Joey Styles has to leave fucking shit, we probably missed some really good fucking pieces of this match because this, yeah, this match just kind of like felt like disconnected all over the place, bad chemistry, kind of awkward. I mean, it just wasn't good. No, yeah. Not at all. And it, the story kind of doesn't make sense because now you're making, like, the baby face come out to, like, interfere in the heels match even though they really haven't been having, like, this blood feud or anything like that. So, like, why is Haas doing this? Well, I mean, he did pull out the chair. I don't think this was a... Uh, no... Yeah, uh, but, like, why would, why would Haas do this? <laughs> well, he only pulled the chair away. I don't think he actually hit anybody with the chair. Yeah, but, like, why, why is he here to torment Sheldon? Leave that well, man alone. Yeah, well, Shelton beat him. And I, I don't, I don't oh, we also didn't mention that RVD is the Intercontinental Champion and the Money in the Bank, yeah. and it's cool to see him with both. It looks nice. Yeah. I like the look of it. It's good. It's good. And he's got the nice little blue uh, briefcase now with RVD on it. And we go from one shit match to another as oh. we get the shit down re-shit. Ty, you're the one that watches yeah. it. You know, tell us about it. All right. So, wait, we did we talk about what happened with Joey in the back? No. This hasn't happened shit. yet. Is it not happened? Segment. Oh, okay. I thought it was before, but yeah, no, I mean, we had a World Heavyweight title. That was a World Heavyweight title? Yeah, Kurt Angle versus Rey Mysterio. It was good. Very good. Uh, Kurt fucked himself up. I guess he got injured during the match or before the match. And so they had to, you know, write him off, I guess. But they had Mark Henry come out and splash him through a table. And if this man's already injured and they're trying to get him out... That's fucked, because then he, like, spits out the, the what's it called, the, the mouth guard, and he's like, ah, my ribs, ah, ah, and he seems genuinely, like, hurting, and I'm like, what the fuck, this is so fucked. Check out Smack Up for that. I think that was the last episode we did, yeah. Yeah, so, is Kurt Angle gone? I think Kurt Angle might be gone until uh, the brands uh, change a little bit. Yeah, because, like, he, I do, I mean, I guess I won't get into it. I don't really have, like, the... I don't remember, like, the exact injury. But I know they, like, yeah. fucked Probably him up neck. more. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was... His muscles fell off. Yeah, I thought it was, like, in June or something. He got labiagitis. Right. Yeah. Check out Diagonally Extreme or wherever he ends up. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited for that. Seven months. But now we go to Joey Styles in the back, gooning with the boys. Yeah! Uh, yeah. Uh, of course. Like I said... Every single fucking segment of this show was just Vince McMahon gooning. Okay. So, Joey Styles, he kind of goes back with the fucking Spirit Squad. And they called him back because Joey Styles got no spirit. One of them says, you're doing a lousy job when he's like, I'm just doing my job. Which, that automatically just makes him a babyface to me. 
Like, I'm glad Coach is gone. He was clearly the worst of the commentators, but I am not a Joey Styles fan. He is still pretty lousy. Lousy on the Raw show. Um, basically, they're telling him he's got to do a better job, especially when Kenny wins. And they have the ultimatum, which this is probably why I got this segment. <laughs> they pull out the, one of the cheerleader outfits. And, you know, you might be thinking, oh, hey, look, cheerleading outfit, right? Like, what are, what, what are they trying to blackmail it because he's like a pervert or something? And they're like, no. We're going to make you dress up like a cheerleader if you don't. Joey Styles is clearly not happy with this. So they start trying to coach him and how they want him to say it. Because he's like, and I know he's purposely just not doing it because he doesn't want to. But, I mean, even then, it's he's like, new WWE champion is Kenny. Yeah, and, real quick, uh, <laughs> to set this up. So... He's be- he's on a couch surrounded by all five of them who are really close to him as this is happening. It's just to Very set the scene here. Essentially close. Yeah. Extremely sensually close. They got balloons and streamers back here. They are clearly having a party here. Yeah, and now they're trying to get him in a cheerleader's outfit. And not their outfit, mind you. The one we saw in the first match with Victoria and Mickey and Tori and Maria. They're trying to get him in the ghost cheerleader outfit, okay? So custom this is, fit, uh, too. Custom fit yeah, for Joey is, Styles. Yeah. They S- custom fitted this thing, so they know yeah. all of the f- like the features of his body. So That's crazy. This. Yeah, like, how that's, the fuck did they do that? Yeah, that's salivating, man, because, I mean, it's, he wears the same suit every time, I feel like, so it's like, it can't be one of his suits that like, they took. No, dude, they, they measured his body very thoroughly to get this fit. Anyways, you know, he, he tries and, you know, he, he can't do it and they send him out and he's just fucking pissed. And they're like pissed, but they're having a good time still. And yeah, Joey Styles, yeah, he's getting a lot of shit today. But and how, does he, and how does he respond? Well, all right. He comes out and he's fucking just pissed and you know king is a weird commentator <clears throat> i mean for all of raw down he's been like the best uh of the three but not by much but like he's always been kind of respectful like i mean he'll jab at them a bit but you know but he's like usually pretty on good terms with them but like J- joey comes down here and king i don't know what got into him storyline wise but he's like being a fucking prick to him he's just like oh have you been practicing you need some spirit you gotta get some spirit right right and and fucking he's pissed enough so he just looks at him and he's like this you're like yeah this is get, do it like your old ecw shit whatever and he's like if this was ecw i want to be working with a hack like you oh well which king kind of likes He's like, finally, I'm getting stood up to. Yeah, he's not being a little baby no more. Yeah, finally, you stop being a baby, Joey. Yeah, so he's like, yeah, you want to see some spirit? So he does the shittiest, lamest looking push to King. He laughs it off. Then he gives him like a proper two hand shove. He laughs it off. He's like, King's like, yeah, that's good, man. That's some spirit, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, the third time, he gets a slap in the face. And that kingly smile turns into a big fucking frown. King looks pissed and king's like fucking he takes this kid and he fucking tosses him across the fucking commentator's table like all the way there it was a fucking i mean sometimes you just forget that jerry lawler is like a wrestler and can do stuff so like joe is just like he 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 and then he gets fucking killed immediately oh shit yeah, yeah, it's that's like right. you forget how strong he is. But, like, yeah, he pushes him so far. He, he calls him. him a little idiot. And then Joey's walks out on the announcing booth. And then we cut to commercial. Yep. Um, I oh. wish they set the – well, I'm, I'm just going over my thoughts. I'm sorry. I, I wish they set – it's all good. I, I wish they set this up a little better because it did seem like it kind of came out of nowhere. But – they, I, I yeah. do think they fix it, but I wouldn't know as much as Ty. 
What happens when we come back from commercial? I clap because I'm gonna I'm gonna run to the bathroom. <laughs> Why didn't you just skip while we were talking? Because I want to hear what it was said so I don't what repeat anything. Oh, we got it. God. All right, okay. we're good. We're 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 in the cut EC zone. Dub. EC no, dub. Keep, dub. keep us EC yelling. Dub. Dub. EC dub. Yeah, yeah, keep it running. I'll be yeah, back. no, keep well, no, us no, yelling at you for running, not shitting when you should have. Not keep all this in. Fuck it. Yeah. Listen, Jerry King Lawler says we dragged this kid out from the gutter, and I guess he's going right back into it. Uh, Fucking, yeah. <laughs> bro, I'm so pissed. I was so happy. Look, Joey Styles might not be the best commentator, but he is leagues better than coach. And then now we're immediately losing him, which means Coach is probably going to come back. So I'm fucking double Sad. pissed at Joey Styles. D- fuck, D- I didn't even think of that. I I just figured they drop Coach. That's that was my dream. Look, I'm just like I hope so, but like you know, there must always be two Sith, right? So yeah. if Joey's fuck. gone, someone else has to show up. I hope maybe, to God it's Jr. But I, maybe it's I just odd. Maybe it's the it, spirit yeah, squad. I'm thinking it might be Todd Grisham for a bit. Hey, sure, I guess. Todd's going to yeah. come drop our bombs on live air again. And, hey, I, hey. Yeah, and I, I don't know, man. I mean, because like now, because I don't know what's going to be worse. Joey Styles, Coach and King, or Todd Grisham, Coach and King. Uh, man. Todd Grisham's not good. No. He he, dude. He sounded like a bigger geek than Joey Styles in commentary. What did Todd Grisham do before this? Uh, I think was he was he one of the backstage guys. Guy, let's pull this up here. Oh, he's he's a sports reporter for DAZN and Glory Kickboxing currently. Let's see here. Oh, look oh, at him. him. He yes, even right. looks like Joey Styles, kind of. Yes, oh, right. He, okay. Oh, he does heat. This is what. Okay, Todd Grisham is the commentary guy on Heat. So, as somebody who doesn't watch Heat, is he good on Heat? Oh, I have no fucking clue. I don't watch that shit. <laughs> oh, Tyler told it. me that Todd Grisham is a terrible commentator. So, <laughs> fuck, we might be you know. super fucked. Yeah, he'd been doing this since 2004 on Heat, and it sounded like, I mean, maybe he was kayfabing up, but it's not like he just got thrown out there and never done this shit in his life. Mm-hmm. What is Experience? WWE Experience, a syndicated American television program that was a recap show that uh, ran okay. for over a year on the CW. Folks, welcome and, to the behind the scenes. Yeah, and he co-hosted with Ivory. It ran internationally until January 2020. What the fuck? Bro, Ivar? Where's Ivar at? Ivar's the man, dude. Here's a Kevin Thorne action figure. Kevin Thorne? I don't know who that is. Ty can talk about Kevin Thorne. Here's a Joey Styles action figure from Ruthless Aggression, Series 35. He looks ripped as hell. Yeah, he does, dude. Is that a belt? You know it is. Does he have the World Heavyweight title? Why does Joey Styles have the World Heavyweight title? Chase the belt, baby. Also, Joey Styles' hair, they really... (laughs) His hair does not look like that. Why do they give him such a shitty hairline? I don't know. Uh... Yeah, because... listener, this may or may not have been cut, but hey, Edgar Ty not. wrote this right. up if you actually listen to it. Ty's taking a fatty shit, so it's probably yeah, gonna be like yeah. twenty minutes of this. So when we get yeah, a we... two hour raw down, that's why. Yeah. Hey, hell yeah, brother. So I guess we could talk about Ty's gone. The question is, was he right? Was Joey Styles right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, Joey was cooking. Yeah, no, with with no doubt. Mm-hmm. I was a fan of this. Like, like I said, getting Joey for like a week, and then he has he cuts a whole promo and does all this shit. I was like, oh hell yeah, dude! Yeah, I'm gonna cool. yell about this on actual pod because God knows if this makes it to air. But where the fuck was this? Like, where was Joey hiding? Because this I, was good. Yeah, you know that's a good point. Is he on Smack? Where's Joey? Where does Joey live? Somebody hit Joey up with some fat amphetamines wow. or something before and he got... Was he off of coke? Was he just on coke for the entirety of ECW? Probably. And then, the, then the Fed made him stop. Ooh, baby. I'm back, baby. Hi. Yo. We've been camping. It's semi-usable. Okay. Yeah, Ty, so you should use it's, it. It's pretty good. It's something that needs to be on the pod, but... No, it does. It's there. <laughs> Listen... Mostly talk... Yeah, a lot of talk about you taking a fatty shit. Ty, tell me about Kevin Thorne. 
Kevin yeah. Thorne, you'll see him soon. He's coming. All right, sick. He's All right, coming. Sick. Oh, yeah. Don't worry. But, yeah. Now, I, I just want to say, as we're almost getting to the end, you see what I mean by this is just him gooning out all the time. Oh, yeah. It's just buff men, women making out with him, fucking beating up huh? on small or disabled people. I mean, this is Vince's wet dream. Thousand percent. All right, Ty, are you gonna stick with Nico's transition, or I've got another one if you want to bring it back on that. Yeah, let's let's bring it back on that. All right, all right. So Ty yeah. just dropped the fucking pipe bomb on his toilet, mm-hmm. and now Joey Styles is here to drop another one. Ty, tell us so, about it. Sick. You know, you know, King is here. He's like Joey. I just want to apologize to you. Come, come back, please. Come on, come on, Joey. Come back. Let's finish the show. Let's be men about this. Come on. And Joey comes out. He looks down, he gets on one knee, he checks his wrist, he looks up, takes off his glasses, and he goes, I got something I gotta say. And he decides to cut a fucking pipe bomb, pre-punk. Maybe punk got some inspiration from this. So he goes into a sick one, and I got the whole quote. So let's let's sit down, let's relax, get uh, get your semen cup out. That we sponsored the bottom. Get your Ray action figure out of the Mason Get your Ray, yard. yeah. Let's 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 have a nice little uh, little chat. So you want to apologize like nothing happened, like you didn't knock me on my ass in front of millions worldwide. I'm not coming back. And now thanks to the magic of live television, I'm going to show the whole world why for seven years I was the uncensored, unscripted, loose cannon of commentary. Six months ago, WWE called me. I didn't call this company because I was looking for a job. I didn't need a job. WWE called me because they had humiliated and fired, again, Jim Ross. So I get JR's spot, and from week one, week after week, I've got an ongoing lecture about the differences for professional wrestling and sports entertainment. I'm not allowed to say pro wrestling. I'm not allowed to say wrestler. I'm supposed to say sports entertainment and call wrestlers superstars. I'm told to deliberately ignore the moves and holds to tell stories. Well, ignoring the moves and the holds is insulting to the wrestlers, not entertainers. People are going crazy. They're like popping over this shit. It's like, what is I'm happening? Going I was, crazy. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, we were going crazy. Are you kidding me? To leave their families 300 days a year to apply their craft in that ring. Well, I'm, since, since I'm not a sports entertainer, storyteller, I got pulled from WrestleMania. Because I don't sound like Jim Ross, who was the guy they fired in the first place. Does that even make sense? Then I get bumped from Backlash. I'm not good enough for Backlash. And ECW, I called live pay-per-views by myself. Wasn't done before me, hasn't been done since. But I'm not good enough to call Backlash because I'm not a sports entertainer storyteller. I'm sick of sports entertainment. I'm sick of cheerleaders and boogers and bathroom humor. I'm sick of our own chairman who talks about his own semen and who mocks God. He mocked God. He makes out with divas. Most of all, I'm sick of you fans who actually buy into sports entertainment crap. I never needed this job, and I don't want this job anymore. I quit. And he throws the mic. Crowd goes a little silly for that. And, uh, <laughs> didn't, was it, was it right there? Uh, Jerry gets back on the mic, and he just goes, yeah. <laughs> what, we got him from the yeah, I got the him. gutter? He got him from the we gutter. Brought Joey, yeah. <laughs> we brought Joey Styles up from the gutter. And now he's homesick. Maybe he'd be uh, happier in a bingo hall kissing Paul Heyman's ass. That was crazy. <laughs> this shit was nuts. This was, this was so awesome. good. This yeah. was awesome. This was maybe the best segment we've seen. It was either this or one of the Foley promos. Like, this shit was awesome. Where the fuck was this Joey Styles? Is this the Joey Styles people talk about? Maybe. Probably. It has to be, because this was awesome. Well, like, yeah. it kind of sets the story of why, why he's shit. Like, it kind of, like, sets up, like, you're like, damn, I hate Joey Styles. He just says nothing. And then now he's like, I can't. I'm not allowed to. Oh, I fully believe so I'm like, that damn. <laughs> at least some of that is probably true. Like, I mean, you know, if we bring into the future zone, yeah, there is a difference between Michael Cole when Vince was there and Michael Cole when he's not. I fully believe that some of this is just Vince over-directing. But, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, 100%. god damn. Yeah, and Vince Joey took a night off. Play. Vince took a knife off, so Joey came to play. But there was a price to pay. Yeah, and it's that <laughs> now he might just be fucking gone. We finally get good Joey Styles. And, well, Dave said this in the part that may or may not be cut, so I'll throw it to him to say it again if it's live on air now. But What? 
your whole bit about how now we just suffer even more because he's gone and now Coach is here. Oh, yeah, dude. Fucking. So we have Coach forever. We hate Coach. You hate Coach. Everyone hates Coach. And then now we have Joey. And I was like, all right. He's not like maybe the best commentator, you know? He's no JR. Let's be real. But like, he's fine. He's not Coach. He's killing it. Uh, and then this happens. So now we immediately then lose this hot commentator. So are we now doomed to get Coach back? I don't I know because we got Todd not. Grissom tonight. Yeah, we got Coach or Todd Grisham apparently are our options with Jerry. Todd was awful, it, dude. Yeah, like this sucks. Like we yeah. get to suffer now more. Like not only does Joey show up randomly, cut a hot promo, kill everything. um, And then he, now he's just gone. Now we just don't have this anymore. What? I don't know. Yeah, we're yeah. we're now we're in the suffering hours very suddenly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the next segment, Todd Grisham comes on commentary, and we were talking during the segment that may or may not exist while Ty was farting and shitting out his penis. It's true. Oh but hell, hell yeah, dude. Todd Gr- Todd Grisham has apparently been on Heat for like years. Yes. Is he good? He sounds awful. No. So on right. Heat, I told you guys. Ty told me he was bad. On so Heat I'm on 06, upset. I have Coach and Todd Grisham. Oh God! Yeah, it's not fun. If if any anybody out there has heat tapes, I'd love to. I'd love to see them. You can barely find every episode. It's not that easy. Velocity, they have it all from 06. but heat, not a chance. But there is commentators worse than Coach and Todd Grissom, and it's on Velocity. Who you, you got? Joey Matthews and uh, who the fuck is his name? like Steve Roberts or something like that, and they keep calling him Sanchez Rodriguez because the super crazy (laughs) comes out. Steve Roberts? I don't fucking know. It's something like that. I've never heard of this guy in my life. I'll get back to you. Let me look it up. Look, I guess I'm glad that it it could be worse, but even still, like, we've... There was finally a brief respite of, you know, we're not doing uh, three-man handicap matches every fucking week and having Coach prattle on about nothing every week. Uh... There's a gl- there was a light at the end of the tunnel, uh, and then everything popped off, and then just Joey leaves. Now we have Todd Grissom. Like I, yeah, I don't know. It's Steve Romero. It's, it, by the way, not Steve good. Romero. In fucking Shala, they just bring Jr. back again. But oh I don't God. think we live in a world that good. I don't think so. Maybe one so day. So we go from that hot fire to now we get Kenny versus John Cena for the belt with Triple H as the guest ref. And this match, while not conventionally good, is sports entertaining. Oh, yeah. This is yeah. one of the better main events I've had to talk about, if only because I didn't want to fall asleep. Again, not much match here. It's mostly bits. But it's entertaining. It's solid stuff. So John Cena comes out. Pretty positive reaction for John this week. He looks like he has a giant burn mark above his nose. And John Cena comes out. He gets the early edge over Kenny. And then stares longingly at his boyfriend, Triple H, who for most of this match is in the corner. Like, really just chilling. Not really paying attention. Mostly looking at the floor. Just kind of looking sad like he doesn't want to be there. Doesn't give a fuck. So John Cena stares longingly at his boyfriend. And Triple H is staring at the floor. So he doesn't try to remember the feelings and what could have been. Oh. And it's unfortunate. John Cena hits this stalling suplex. He holds Kenny up there for a good long time. Again, to try to impress his boyfriend. But Triple H is being a Baka Sundere and just staring at the floor. <laughs> this is tragic. <laughs> Kenny goes up for a crossbody. And John Cena just catches him out of midair. Doesn't move. Kenny's a pretty big guy. And John Cena just catches him like a brick wall. Hoists him up for the FU. But then Triple H runs out, just punches John Cena in the head. Kenny gets out. And Kenny throws him the outside where the Spirit Squad ball him. And Triple H pretends to be distracted with Kenny, just kind of talking to him. And it's very obvious that John Cena is getting the shit kicked out of him by 17 boys on the outside. Yeah. They throw... John Cena back in, and Kenny goes over to pin him, but Triple H turns around and now starts yelling at the Spirit Squad and refuses to count the pin. 
So this goes from Triple H to just try and help the squad win to make Vince happy to Triple H just being a fucking goof. So Kenny gets mad, goes back up, knocks John Cena down with some moves again, goes for the pin. Triple H very slowly, slovenly. He also looks like a smacked ass this episode. He looks <laughs> awful. Just yeah. his his beard is fucked up. I didn't talk about that, but he has some real shit with his facial hair. It's not good. He looks terrible. But so he slowly shambles over, gets down on the floor, counts a very slow one, two, Cena kicks out, Kenny's getting a little peeved, John Cena goes to hit the 2K comeback, but he's pulled out and mauled on the outside again as Triple H and Kenny just watch that happen, like, oh man, that's pretty cool. So they throw him back in again, Kenny goes to pin him again, Triple H again, very slowly meanders over, gets to the ground, real slow. One, two, Cena kicks out. Oh no. Kenny gets up, hits the elbow, Triple H again, real slow. One, two. Kenny's now pissed off and is like starting to get in Triple H's face and yell at him about this. But he doesn't yet assault him, I think. So Kenny does the you can't see me, hits a neck breaker. Has to beg for Triple H to look at him because Triple H is staring into the crowd. And just beckoning him over. Then Triple H, oh, okay. Wanders over, does a slow two, screams at Triple H again, picks Cena up, DDT, has to get Triple H over there again. Triple H, even more slowly, counts one when Cena kicks out. And now Kenny has just lost his mind. Throws his headband into the crowd, starts shoving Triple H for being a bad ref. So Triple H punches Kenny in the head, pedigrees Mitch. He rips his ref shirt off, and then he just leaves. And the Spirit Squad are mauling John Cena as we get several shots of Triple H taking a few steps up the ramp, looking at his boyfriend that he has abandoned, walking a little bit away. Stares the ring again, walks a little further. They're just killing John Cena. But then Triple H's other boyfriend, Shawn Michaels, with his ref shirt still on, is now walking down the ramp. And Triple H and Shawn Michaels are now staring at each other, longingly. Are these old men going to kiss? They think about it, but no. God damn it, again. Triple H will not kiss one of his boyfriends. And he leaves. And Shawn Michaels comes down, to the, comes down the ramp, hits the ring. Kenny hits the leg drop. Ref Sean comes in. I guess he's still legally the ref from his previous job. Anyone who wears the the, the zebras, you know, yeah. technically the he's ref. He's got the shirt. Yeah, he's got the shirt. It counts. So he comes in. He counts two, like a real count. But at two, he stops counting, just stares at Kenny. Kenny gets up to yell at him. Then he hits Kenny with the sweet chin music. He does the suck it to the spirit squad. And then Cena and Shawn Michaels clear the ring of the rest of the Spirit Squad out running in to fight them. And then uh, Johnny gets hit with the You Can't See Me and the Sweet Chin music. And then John Cena hits Kenny with the FU. And Shawn Michaels counts the 1, 2, 3. And John Cena's music plays and Lily announces he won. So I guess this was legal. So John Cena defeats Kenny in a match of bits that sets up, I guess, Triple H and Shawn Michaels made fuck or date or something and triple h is kind of a gooner who's here to do whatever the fuck triple h wants to do but he's not completely beholden to vince anymore so not a conventional or a good match but it was funny yeah. triple h did a good job of being a shithead it was pretty cool crowd was into it yeah i'd give it a sports entertaining out of 10 as yeah. far as these main events go is one of the best ones we've seen i got <laughs> sports entertained by that that was nice finally a good episode yeah you've been sports entertained and i guess except for nico but more importantly all of you you've been raw down (gasps) damn damn